Welcome to San Cristobal de la Casa, one of the most colorful and most beautiful cities in all of Mexico. few days I want to show you guys the best places to eat, the best things to do and the best places to visit in and near the beautiful colourful colonial city of San Cristobal de la Casa. So let's go! talk about how to get to San Cristobal de la Casa. Most people will fly into the airport located just over an hour away and get a shared shuttle or a taxi to the city centre. Other options besides flying include taking an overnight bus from Mexico City, from Palenque or Puerto Escondido. Flights start from about $50 and the shuttle from the airport to the city costs $10. While San Cristobal de la Casa was once the capital of the state of Chiapas, these days it's more of a cultural capital, attracting tourists with its culture, its history and its indigenous communities. San Cristobal de la Casa is one seriously hilly city. It is surrounded by mountains and you can go to various viewpoints within the city to get a more unusual perspective. Some of these church viewpoints include the famous Guadalupe Church, the sanctuary on San Cristobal Hill, an Iglesia del Cerrito, which is a steep 240 step climb to the top, but with panoramic views of the city. Over the years, it has become a popular tourist destination with travelers from around the world, with many people choosing to set up base in the city and opening international restaurants such as Korean cuisine, Chinese cuisine, French, Italian, Peruvian, you name it. I believe one of the best things to do here in San Cristobal on your first day is to simply walk down the streets and get totally lost. Take a stroll down the pedestrianised Guadalupe Street to find cute cafes, boutique clothes stores, wine bars and an array of international cuisine. From colourful streets, colourful cathedrals, beautiful artisan markets and incredible coffee shops, there is no doubt that you guys are going to absolutely love your visit to this colourful city. Doing a bit of shopping on San Cristobal's colourful pedestrian streets and visiting the local food and craft markets is a must. You will find the most beautiful handcrafted bags, belts, shoes, and various colorful souvenirs, as well as many amber stores, a gem this city is famous for. You have the most common one, yellow one, and then the one with the um, yellow with the moss inside, because yep. when it was fresh, mm. like 23 million years ago, <laughs> it cut everything that was I, I like green amber, yeah. It's the most expensive. Less than 1% of the total extraction is green amber. Oh, wow. Most of the clothes here are hand embroidered by the indigenous people living in communities close to the city, which you can also visit on a day trip. This is for that, but I think it's fun for the dogs. Oh, yeah. you're right. I think they have probably different ones. Sorry. So I feel like my friends did buy a camera strap here. And you will notice the skirts that, yeah, that they're wearing. Is that traditional? Yeah. And it tells you. Oh, wow. I didn't actually notice. And that's. That What's that made of? Uh, wool. Oh, wow. No, sheep. from sheep. From sheep. Yeah. Black sheep. It indicates you where they're from. So they're from Tamula, from the, the town I was telling you about. Gotcha. So we are just checking out the center of San Cristobal this morning. We checked out the Santo Domingo market and the church. And now we're just here on one of the pedestrian streets. So there's two long streets and they're sort of perpendicular to each other. And we're just walking, looking for a second hand shop so that I can get a rain jacket. Oh, it's just here? Perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I stupidly came all the way to Chiapas with a rain jacket, forgetting that it's like 
Mexican Ireland that rains a lot here. So now I'm just looking for some warmer clothes to buy in this second hand store. After about five minutes, I found the perfect jacket. It cost less than $5 and I was sorted for the rest of my trip. Even if you're not looking to buy food or vegetables, it's fun to walk around the city and check out the structure and layout of all the different shops in the city. All of the shops are quite small and then you also have a big central market and lots of delicious candy stores if you're a sweet tooth just like me. Each neighborhood here has its own charm. Each neighborhood is famous for a different reason and every neighborhood has its own church, all with varying styles of architecture, age and design. And of course, there's the main cathedral located on the city's main square next to the government building. Two of the most famous indigenous villages that most people visit are Chamula and Zinakantan. If you want to know more about visiting these villages, be sure to check out my other YouTube videos. Chamula is famous for a few reasons. It is the only indigenous community in Mexico that is fully supported by the government. They also have a very distinct traditional dress with the women wearing dyed sheepskin skirts and the men wearing sheepskin jackets. Chamula is also famous for its very unique church and religious practices, such as sacrificing a chicken to get rid of bad spirits and covering the floor of the church in pine needles. The other indigenous village close to San Cristobal is Zinacantan, which is famous for its colorful traditional dress and the textiles they make here, which include beautiful shawls and clothing covered in embroidered flowers. If you're looking for a more adventurous full day trip from San Cristobal, I highly recommend checking the waterfalls of El Chiflon and the lakes of Monte Bello. It's about an hour hike up to the main waterfall and the views are simply spectacular. With the lakes, you can actually rent a raft and row across the lake Hopefully the weather is sunny for you and you can check out a local cenote and the beautiful multicolored lakes of Monkey Bay. <laughs> I'll work in a second. <laughs> if you want to know what the full experience of a day trip to the lakes of Monte Bayo and the El Chiflon waterfall is like, be sure to check out my other YouTube videos. When it comes to food, San Cristobal has it all. From delicious baked treats on the street to cute cafes, international restaurants, you can either eat local cuisine for the entire duration of your stay or taste food from a different country for every single meal. Here are some of my top recommendations for places to eat and places to drink in San Cristobal. For breakfast, I really recommend Jardin Carrillo, which is just a few minutes walk from Guadalupe Street. There's a really nice central garden, lots of tables, and there's a few different cafes to choose from with lots of local cuisine. For dinner on our first night, we went to La Maldita, which is a very beautiful restaurant right next to the steps of Guadalupe Church. It has panoramic views of the city. It's all lit up at nighttime, and they have quite an international menu, whereas I got some sort of greasy fries with bacon and cheese, and my friend got cheese fondue. If you fancy a glass of wine and love some cheap drinks, then you have to go to this wine bar on Guadalupe Street. Glasses of wine here start at just 27 pesos, which is one euro, and for each wine that you get, you also get a free tapa. For a quick breakfast or a fresh juice in the middle of the day, I have to recommend La Papaya Milagrosa, which is a new enough juice bar right off the main square with delicious juices served in this gorgeous glass with fresh pieces of fruit garnished on top. You can't come to San Cristobal without drinking some coffee. A, there's a lot of coffee shops and B, Chiapas is actually a region in Mexico that is very famous for their coffee and you can choose from many different types of coffee beans. Every single morning I had to go for my morning coffee and I went to a number of cafes scattered around the city as well as trying out some of their hot chocolate which is also famous here. There's a large upscale food court, you could say, called 500 Noches, where there's about five or six different restaurants inside. We actually went here a few times, including breakfast on two mornings and for drinks and snacks one evening. So I highly recommend checking it out and tasting some of the different cuisines available.
If you fancy Indian food while in San Cristobal, I highly recommend going to Cardamomo. This was one of the cheapest Indian restaurants I've been to outside of India, where we were both able to get starters, an entire curry, naan bread and rice for less than $5 each. As with every city in Mexico, you're going to find lots of shops and little cafes that sell tacos. I ordered suadero, which is like a very soft uh, meat, mm -hmm. beef, and then pastor, which is marinated pork, pork right? Marinated pork, yeah. With cheese on top. Yeah. And they add um, always pineapple. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. These are the first tacos I've actually ordered here in Chiapas. We've had lots of different other food, but I haven't had uh, tacos yet. So let's see how Chiapas does their tacos. It's really big. If you're looking to taste some local beers, there are two craft breweries I must recommend. The first is a very well-known, always busy, and a bit of a secret bar until you're inside. Fun decor, live music, and lots of beers to choose from. It's called Cerveceria Nofragio. The second is a very new craft brewery, which is much smaller, but also a fun place to try some local craft beers. <laughs> and that one is called Casa Raidula. <laughs> and that's a wrap on the top things to do and places to visit in beautiful San Cristobal de la Casa. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video guide and that you will enjoy your visit to this amazing, colorful city. If you did, please think about giving my video a thumbs up and think about subscribing below.